My name is Gina James. I'm the owner of Turner Hair Salon in Nashville, Tennessee. My parents are William and Ginger James. I found out at an early age that I was adopted. My parents adopted me uh, about the age of two, and my biological mother was in and out of my life a little bit. She would, I knew her, and uh, I knew we had a connection, but I never lived, I can't remember living with her. She was kidnapped, raped, and murdered on Christmas Eve when I was in the seventh grade. My mom was, she was adopted. I didn't find that out until I was at her funeral. The lady that lived next door to my mom was her biological mother and they never told her that that was her mother until the lady died. When my mom found out that the lady next door was her mother and she never knew, she became rebellious and she went from being a good kid, a straight A student, she got addicted to drugs and uh, well she got pregnant with me and then she um, was dating an older man and got addicted to drugs and um, just living a life uh, down on the wrong path and I would be over my grandmama Charlie's house and my mom said they met me and they said oh we just fell in love with you and we told your mom if you ever need a babysitter we'll babysit you and she said my mom said well I want to go to a party tonight one day she was with a the older guy, I guess he was abusive to her, and um, my mom said she called me, called my mom and said, I need you to come get Gina, because um, <clears throat> she she was, you know, I guess she getting in an abusive relationship, the guy was beating on her or something. And my mom and Ginger said, let me just keep her till you can get yourself together. And I've been with her ever since. So I was working with some people, and they was talking about generational curses, and I started thinking, Hey, that, you know, that's true. Like, I was making some choices. I could see myself making a lot of the same choices that my mom had made. Living a life in the streets and um, dating older guys. I was adopted, she was adopted. You know, it, it was just like I saw a lot of the same traits. And I was like, I always knew that I never wanted to try drugs. I. I yeah, I saw what happened to her, so I didn't want that to happen to me. How people are addicted to drugs, you can be addicted to fast money. And uh, my parents, they raised me, you know, they did well in life. And I kind of feel like when I did, um, when I got in college and I moved out on my own, I feel like I should be living a certain lifestyle. I thought that I should have certain things. Hey take this kilo down the street and make $3,000 just to take down the street. I was thinking, fast money. I knew what I was doing and I kind of felt like if I ever get arrested, I'd probably just get probation or a few months in jail because i never been arrested before. So I didn't think it would be a big deal. Like, And you see people get arrested like, and get out. But the first time I got arrested from that charge, I did three years in federal prison. It broke my daddy's heart. My daddy was just crying. And, um, you know, um, at the time, and I was going back and forth to court for like two years. And in the midst of that, I got pregnant with my oldest daughter. And, you know, that's probably like the hardest thing to have to leave her. When I left, she was eight months old when I had to turn myself in. I felt, it was hard. I felt bad doing that to my parents, like leaving my child with them and they were able to take, keep my, my house, my business for a while. So, you know, I just felt like it was putting a lot of stress on them. If you do wrong, you still have to pay the consequences. So I was mentally in the right place to deal with turning myself in and doing my time. One of the counselors from the halfway house saw my hair. <laughs> when I got out of prison, I was like, I'm going to stop at the weave shop and get me some hair, and I'm sewing my hair in on the bus on the way back home. I got somebody in the prison to braid my hair up before I got, before I got released. Yeah, so the counselor at the halfway house saw my hair, and she said, who, did you do your own hair? You did your hair? And I said, yeah. And she said, um, 
I got. I think I can find you a job. So she referred me to her stylist, and I went in there, talked to the lady, and uh, she she hired me. And um, I went through my black book with all my clients' information and started calling them and said they was coming in the same day. It turned a hair salon. We just we like everybody to feel like family. Um. The three years I was gone, some of my clients said they didn't go to anybody else to get their hair done. And it's like, through everything I've been through in life, um, I was adopted into a family that took me in and showed me love. I, I don't, I hate to even say I'm adopted because that's my family. And that's how I would like to make my clients feel. I like to make them feel like they are adopted into the Turner Heads family. And they don't want to go any, anywhere else because it's family. So that's the type of feeling we want the clients to have. Like, we got you. <laughs>